This time on XT for the King, I embark on a serene autumn ride through the mountains of Inman, but tranquility takes a back seat when I find myself stuck in a muck pit. With the sun going down, I have got to secure a campsite, and time is not on my side. I've got to find a place to camp because I'm running out of daylight. Stay tuned for an unforgettable moto camping adventure. So gorgeous. I really wanted to get out and do a fall moto camping trip because I've heard that the leaves in the fall are beautiful here. And so far, yes, indeed they are. Very beautiful place. I would like to see what that road is and where it goes. Ooh, getting flashbacks. I see signs of a large animal. I'm just kidding, it's a cow. I mean, it is a large animal. Uh oh. So we got a kill here. And that looks like a sheep. A lot of uh, fuzz down there. Sheep's fur. That's crazy. Hopefully not a foreboding sign. Yeah, I don't see any more road here, guys. Rather avoid a situation like last time. And there are remnants of a dead sheep. That can't be good either. So hoping there would be like a road to the top of the mountain. But doesn't look like it. Looks like a bad day waiting to happen to me. Branches everywhere. Back to the easy road. Oh, this is cool right here. You know what? Last time I went that way, I think I'm gonna go explore this way a little bit. Oh. Well, I'm going in the mud. Okay. I believe this is the road I want to go to here. I have never been down this way before. I'll be saying that a lot until I explore everything. <laughs> Interesting place. Oh, that's kind of cool. Like a forest with a bunch of green grass in it. Whoa! I was not paying attention there, and there was a big old trench. Cow. Thought I might see some of those. Big animals. Suddenly in the mood for hamburgers. More cows. Woo. Probably could have got here a week ago and I had, would have had a little bit better fall colors. Very pretty. Just gonna pop my little weight around that mud puddle. Some people like mud puddles, but I kind of prefer to stay out of them, if at all possible. Kind of slippery. Ooh, Didn't see the mud there. Very beautiful forest. Well, there's a beautiful trail there, but I'm gonna be honest, guys, I don't know if I can get up that. Maybe. Let's try, huh? Haha! Uh -huh. I made it! Sort of. Uh, 
Oh, it goes nowhere. That's disappointing. Not gonna lie, guys, I was really hoping for some kind of a reward up here, but there's nothing. No campsite, no nothing. So I'm gonna head back down and keep looking. It's gonna be a, a treacherous ride down, that's for sure. Huh, bike wouldn't start. I must have uh, bumped the kill switch. Should have checked that first. Thought it was a kickstand sensor and I was getting a little nervous and then I was like, oh, it's a kill switch. Of course it's the kill switch. I don't recall bumping it, but maybe I did. Don't know who else would have done it. Okay, onward hunt for a campsite. Okay. Looks like I'm riding right through this part. Seems to be very wet. Well, that sucks. Ah! Rats. Come on. How stuck am I? So off canter. Kilter. Ah. What in the world? Stupid thing. It's too heavy. Come on. Oh, man. Where did this come from? I hate mud puddles. So disappointing. I was gonna film a gear review after this and now all my gear is covered in mud. And I have no campsite in sight. Feeling frustrated after my unexpected plunge into the mud, I rev up the throttle, racing against the setting sun to secure a campsite before darkness blankets the mountains. Thank you. Alright, I've got to find a place to camp soon. Cause I'm running out of daylight. I'm actually running out of time. Ooh, a deer. Appears I'm gonna be careful. My front brake lever has lost its spring and the thing that does the brake. I have no front brake. This bike is due for some winter maintenance. I have really beat it up over this summer. Just kind of flopping around in there. Must have came loose when I was in that mud. Hello, I'm a lost traveler looking for a place to stay. So bumpy. Okay, I am hoping this runs into a creek. I guess we'll find out. Oh! 
a little bit difficult without my front brake. Here we go. Oh, something tells me I should have just gone to the family campgrounds. Oh, I spy something. Well, it's water, but it's a big mud puddle. I'm gonna see what's up here real quick. Right, guys as you can see my bike is a little bit muddy fell in a mud puddle earlier I'm sure you saw I'm now gonna have to set up camp here because it's the only one I can find get a fire going and uh, get things rolling so on that note I'm gonna go ahead and get camp ready Okay, this is the Alps Mountaineering Lynx backpacking tent, one person. I also have the footprint for it. This is super important on this tent because it doesn't have a tarp on the bottom like the cheaper tents do. So let's set this up. Well, bam. All right, now we'll move on to the actual tent. thing about this rain fly is it just buckles in no need to stake it down except for one stake this gives you a cool little garage put all your camping gear I've been super impressed with this tent it also has some extra wind tie downs if it's extra windy but I've never been in a situation where I've needed it fantastic next item of interest is the climate insulated static V um, it says it's four season. I don't think it is. It's probably only three. I haven't tested it in really cold weather, but I've got cold when it gets under 40 degrees. So if you're going to do winter camping, I wouldn't recommend this. I would get something that's better with more insulation, to say the least. But anyway, there we go. Next, obviously, we have a sleeping bag. This is a Kelty Cosmic Down 40 degrees. I'm super impressed with this while I've had it. It keeps you warm down to 40 degrees as long as you have a mat to sleep on. Below that, you need a little something extra. Great sleeping bag. I would recommend this. I'm going to get the 20 degree next. Next item is this rusted ridge. This has down feathers in it as well. Super compact sleeping blanket. And I usually use this in conjunction with the sleeping bag to stay warm. Get that in there. So it is fall. So I bought this thermal light reactor. I don't know how cold it's gonna get up here, but it could be fairly cold. This is supposed to add 25 degrees to your sleep temperature. So I guess we'll find out if that's true. Next, I've got a hammock pillow, which I use for hammock camping, or thought I did. It ended up working out as a really good leg pillow. So it's got a one-way valve on it. You can blow it up. Next, we've got this hike venture ultralight pillow super happy with this pillow it was cheap ordered it off amazon it's got a quilted area here nice and soft to sleep on blows up in a few blows and it is so much better than any other camp pillow i've tried fantastic now there is one more thing i bring moto camping it's a backpacking chair it's very small very cheap you can go out to eat for more than it costs to get this just like that, as my brother put it. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. That's good. So I've been using this lantern from Goal Zero. Um, it's a lighthouse mini. You can turn on one side of it, turn on the other side, 
or both sides, and it's totally adjustable. I really like it. I usually hang it in my tent, but I have something better for that today. We've got the Goal Zero Crush Light. Now, I'm not being paid by these guys or any guys. All of this is out of my own pocket. This was, again, about as cheap as the camp chair. Hardly anything. Doesn't seem that bright right now, but in a tent, it's more than enough. And it's got solar power too, which is cool. Call that good. All right, next step's a fire. Oh no, I got covered in burrs. There are major burrs around here. Okay, that was way too much gas. I think next time I'm gonna find a better way to start fires. This is not safe at all. There, we have fire. Turns out I did have a fire starter in there that I could have used the whole time instead of gas. And uh, gas didn't work anyway. Fire starter worked. As always, I've got my little camp stove. And this time, we got some cup noodle stir fry that we're gonna try. See how it tastes. While I'm waiting for that to boil, got some more smoked salmon. This time I've got the great value version. This right here is bear food. It's gonna make me bear food anyway. Other thing I always bring with me is a canteen and a water bottle. And I normally bring a coffee mug, but this time I forgot it. Never had this before. I've heard they're better than the regular ones. Guess we'll find out. Because it does say teriyaki on them. It's a little sweet, but it tastes good. It's got a lot more good vegetables in it. Well, in honor of autumn, pumpkin spice Swiss mitts. Too early? I don't know. Moto camping. Let's see if that makes it taste any better. All right, try this out. Cheers. <clears throat> well, it tastes festive. I'll give it that. Well guys, I am absolutely beat. It was a lot more tiring than I was planning, of course. Isn't that how all my trips have turned out so far? Definitely a good adventure. Here's one more thing that I usually put in here. Bear bag. Basically anything goes in here that could potentially smell. Cool thing about it is I think you can't really smell much through it. There we go. Hang that up. Golden rule is as far away from your camp as you're comfortable having a bear. I am armed, so I'm comfortable having it 50 feet away. That's fine, as long as it's not messing around in my camp. Really, the fear of bears is a little bit over-exaggerated. There are rare cases where people have been killed by bears, but you're far more likely to die riding your motorcycle or uh, even driving your car to work than you are getting attacked by a bear out in the woods. So now that I've done that, I've got the star labs going, and there are gonna be some beautiful stars tonight. I'm going to get ready to head to bed. <sighs> Nice warm hat. I'll let you know how all this works in the morning. Good night. To the chief musician, the psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Psalm 19, 1 through 3. Well, good morning. I slept okay. Didn't sleep very long, but I did stay very warm. So I think it's time to get up and get a fire going and get some breakfast going. Ooh, I always put too much. I will be investing in some better fire starting methods, guys. Oh, it feels good. There's some cows in the morning mooing away. All right, now to begin the long trek to get my food bag untouched. Never be too safe though, right? So today for coffee, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. You guys probably have seen me using the percolator before, which is fantastic. However, look at this. Mini pour over coffee thing. Folds down totally flat. Saves a lot of space in the packing loadout. Since I don't have my coffee mug, that will have to do. Coffee filters and coffee. Coffee's brewing. Now let's make breakfast. So guys, I actually bring two of these chargers and two more small ones, uh, mostly for camera equipment, but I do recommend getting something like that for, uh, for just like your phone and stuff. And if you do bring a camera, you've got that. 
Blueberry oatmeal, delicious. One thing I will certainly say about cup of noodles stir fry cup is it comes with a much sturdier cup than the other cup noodles do. And you can almost clean it out. This way with my limited water, I don't have to dirty my pot. If I were planning for another night, this is where I would leave this campsite and go find a campsite with water. One last thing, ta-da. No idea if this will be any good, but it sounds delicious. I don't think I can imagine a scenario where smoked trout wouldn't be good. That is a solid looking filet right there. Mm, that is good. I don't know about you guys, but usually all my life when I go to the tuna section, I just go get the tuna and look around. But lately I've discovered that there's other meats and other kinds of fish in the tuna section that are so much better than tuna. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my coffee. I'm gonna start packing up. One thing before we leave, I'll mention if you want to stay comfortable moto camping, especially more than one night, which I'm not doing obviously, but you got to stay organized. Keep all your stuff and take that extra time to, to put it all back where it belongs and uh, of course have enough to be comfortable. Anyway, let's head out of here. Well everyone, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, please subscribe and comment if you don't mind. It'll help me out and give me some encouragement. I'm just going to head back home from here, so God bless and I'll see you next time. Mountains call to dungeons deep. I got a flat tire. Yeah. I was trying to pull my top, my spare off here. Yeah. And like I don't have something that can like pop it. Like I don't know. Like, I, like it looks like one where you could twist it underneath. Pop it. So, yeah, that's what I thought. But when I was trying to go under there and twist it, like it wasn't moving. So I'm okay. Not sure, like, I don't know if you know. Yeah, we don't have service and I can't really okay. look anything up. Let so. me see what I got. Give me a second. Yep. No, I was just on my way home. I paused to assist Jared and Shannon, stranded due to a flat front tire. Though they were up for learning how to change it, their real challenge was their truck's subpar toolkit. A stubborn bolt proved too much for the factory issued wrench. You guys don't care if you get slightly in a YouTube video, do you? <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I'll head down there and give them a call. I took down their dad's number and rode to where I could get a cell signal. I called him to come to the rescue. They're in good hands now. Thanks for watching. God bless.